Today we'll be going over the 15 inch MacBook Pro pre unibody style hard drive replacement. And this hard drive is not very user friendly to replace like the new unibodies. And we'll be going over that today. You'll need your new hard drive and a fine screwdriver toolkit along with a black spudger tool. Specifically, you'll need the T6 Torx bit and the Philips 00 bit. Let's begin! Alright, so let's go ahead first, remove the battery. Get that out of the way, and there are three Phillips screws that we'll need to remove for the RAM door. If you notice, I also have the bit required for removal up in the upper left corner, and that will change depending on what bit I'm using for a particular set of screws. Again, there are only two bits you need for this job, the PH00 and the Torx T6. Go ahead and start removing the other Phillips screws in the bottom of the computer. There are four of these. These are fairly long screws and uh, make sure you organize your screws appropriately. I did this so many times that I could just eyeball it and know which screw which goes where. Alright, there are screws all around the perimeter of the computer. Two on the back here. And there's four, I believe, on each side. These are easy to tell because these screws have a machined face. It's kind of um, polished. And they're different than what you would find internally. All right, so check the exterior, make sure you got all the screws. And um, that was my microwave. All right, so here we're removing screws from the other side where the ports are. You do wanna take caution when re reinstalling the screws. I'll go over that when the time comes. And again, there were four of these on this side as well. There are two screws in the battery bay that secure the top case to the computer. Go ahead and remove these. These have a wider machine face, similar to the exterior perimeter screws. These are a little wider, but a little shorter as well. So they're kind of easy to mix up. Just make sure you keep them organized. Now we're switching to a T6 Torx bit, and there are two T6 screws just around the memory slots. Go ahead and check again that you've gotten all the screws around the exterior, the battery bay, and the memory. 
Now it's time to lift up the top case. Do this carefully, it's clipped toward the front by the optical drive. Use your spudger tool to gradually and gently pry up around that area. Fish it along. Don't stick it in too far, there's some wires around there, you don't want to damage those. And it'll just pop right off. Don't, and also there is a keyboard connector still connected toward the middle. Don't pull the top case off until you've disconnected that. And it's secured by Kapton tape, which is non-conducting. Pry that up, and the top case is free to remove. So now we pry up the hard drive connector located here on the motherboard. Gently pry it up. It's adhered to the express card slot right next to it. We we'll also need to use the T6 bit to remove two screws holding the hard drive bracket on. The second screw is under this yellow tape and I just kind of navigate my way around it. The ribbon going down the hard drive is secured by adhesive, so you need to use your black stick to very carefully pry up on the connectors and the ribbon cable. Be very careful in this area because the connectors are soldered on. You don't want to be prying too hard and break those solder joints. A lot of computer work is relying on knowing how much force to use in certain areas and how hard to pull or push. So I'm prying this up gently. I'll be disconnecting those two connectors once I realize that the ribbon cable would probably be easier removed that way. Once you have it removed, go ahead and lift the hard drive out of the hard drive bay. And you'll need to start removing the adhesive part, which I'm doing now, in order to get the hard drive connector off. This is fairly delicate. You don't want to be ripping this thing off, so go ahead and slowly do it. There are four screws you'll need to take off the hard drive. Two of them have a rubber insulating washer, and the other side are just two T6 screws. I almost forgot to take those off just then. Through the magic of editing, I have my new Western Digital hard drive in my hand already. I begin by making sure I orient the drive right and I know which side to put the screws on. Looking at it with the connector up, the bare screws go on the right side of the drive and the rubber insulating screws go on the left side of the drive. And I just realized that right and left will depend on which way the drive is facing. With the label facing you and the connectors on the top side, the rubber screws will go on the right side.
Go ahead and reconnect the hard drive cable. Make sure it's secure and then start re-adhering the connectors down the drive. It's almost reaching the blowhole at the end, but that's okay, it's not covering it. Slide the left side in to the grommets first and then seat the right side. Go ahead and plug in the two connectors. I believe one is for the Bluetooth antenna and the other one is just for the light in the front. Don't quote me on that. Oh no, one's for the Bluetooth, I believe antenna. One's for the light and then one's for the IR sensor in the front, I think. Oh well. Replace the hard drive bracket. It only goes one way, so make sure you orient it the right way. And replace the two T6 torque screws. I think I actually had the wrong screw at that point. My bad. Make sure none of the wires are going to get caught when you put the case back on. Make sure they're routed properly. And then snap the hard drive connector back flat onto the logic board. Make sure the adhesives all settled and good to go. And then you should be able to put back the top case. Top case, top end in first. Connect keyboard connector. Make sure the Kapton tape that it's connected to gets smushed down and secured because that stuff does pop out if you uh, don't secure it. And carefully replace the top case, making sure that all of the parts of the top case are inside the computer, where the threads are. Check the top. Sometimes the threads like to, or the, uh, the metal part where the threads go, like to stick outside and uh, get bent. You don't want that to happen. That stuff does break off if you bend it. Using your spudger tool in the CD drive slot, Go ahead and snip, snap those connectors back. You don't want to crush the CD drive bay, so you need to have something in there. That thing does bend if you push down on hard enough on it. All right, so there are, again, four screws per side. What you want to do when putting the screws in is hold the top case down and make sure you screw the s screws in snugly. I've seen times where screws get loose and fall out and you see people with th missing screws and the top case develops gaps and looks terrible. Two screws on the back. All of the perimeter screws on the side of the case or, or the side of the computer are all the same. That small little screw with the machine face, easy, kind of easy to see. They're all um, nice looking, uh, like Apple would do it. On to the other side, this is where you got to be careful. The, two, the DVI slot has two screw slots. You don't want to be putting that screw in there or the perimeter screws into the DVI securing socket screws. If you do that, you need to remove the logic board, which is a huge job. Or a more getaway, use a toothpick with super glue to grab those screws. So those four screws on this side. Check the perimeter, make sure all the screws are in and the top case looks nice, no gaps. Now to the bottom of the case. Go ahead and stick the four long screws into the bottom of the case first and work your way down. Uh, 
Whoops. Sped this up a little bit because I'm sure you can could not care less about me screwing screws in. Uh, this part uses two T6 torque screws, so change your bit out. Stick them in first, it makes it a little, little bit quicker. And then screw those in. Check your work a little bit. The key is to check your work, especially working with a Max. You want to make sure all your screws are in before you start sealing it up. And just another tip, if a screw doesn't go in, don't force it in. Um, if a screw is too long, it could punch through um, where it needs, where it's supposed to be, and actually bend the case from the inside, or or some, or, or worse. I've seen it happen, and uh, it's not pretty. And the customer sometimes does come back <laughs> and notices it. Not that I've actually done it before, but I've seen it. Replace the memory cover. Put those three Phillips screws in. And um, replace the battery. And it's more or less good to go. Check the battery status. It's got charge. Power it on and test to see if it powers on. Obviously it's a new hard drive. It won't have an operating system on it. If you're upgrading and you want to clone the drive, there are several utilities available. There's Carbon Copy Cloner. There's Super Duper, both I've used with success, and I would recommend those. In this case, we're installing a new operating system for my dad, and he'll be using Windows 7 and OS X. All right, thanks for watching.